Yes, it's very good to be back. Hello, Garage. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was here in this very space installing my artwork. Now I'm here as a speaker and also as a, how can I say, as a curious organizer. I'll tell you about why, why I said curious. Um, after the archive is the after the archive is the name of an uh, artist initiative founded by uh, four artists in Istanbul. It was last year in the winter when Istanbul, especially Istanbul and Turkey, was going through a very very bad time. Um, the bombings, Erdogan's policies, all made us stay home. It affected everybody's psychological life, their daily life, even people's libido. It was rumored that people made less love that year, that uh, winter. It was a terrible winter for many, many people. And it was very difficult to produce. Many artists have stopped their practice. They still do, some of them. Uh, and institutions were closing. Uh, major institutions also decided to go actually down or downsize themselves. Uh, one of them, uh, another representative of SALT is here. They started talking about the idea of monastery mode, to go inside the monastery. Uh, uh, which means to produce knowledge inside a small group of people, within a small group of people, behind closed doors, which is very interesting. And uh, we listen to these discussions as artists uh, ourselves. And I was invited by an artist initiative to curate something uh, in their space, and I said I'm not interested in curating, and I'm actually also at this point in my life not even interested in exhibiting my work in Turkey. So what else can we do? Uh, let's make a series of talks. And we had other people who were also interested in doing something like this. So there was a very small space uh, in, uh, in, not in the very center of the, of the city, I can do like this maybe. Yeah. Uh, so we started making our talks with 15 people maximum. This is the most uh, amount of audience we had. And this was the first season of our talks. I'll talk about the structures and our guests later, but see the change. This is two days ago in Istanbul, the second season of our talk. There are over 200 people. Uh, again, uh, the, the topic is archives, and this is a very famous phenomenologist in uh, Turkey, Professor Zeynep Sayın. And she had uh, such a big audience that we actually uh, uh, couldn't find any more chairs, and we even had to make a closed circuit uh, live uh, transmission to the back of the space. What has changed? What has changed is the atmosphere has changed. People started going out more, and uh, major uh, attractions of the city were full of people, which were literally completely empty over the winter. We were scared to go out. And of course, this is only Istanbul. If you think about the Kurdish regions, the situation is much more dire, was much more dire and it is still much more dire, and I'll come to that as well. Um, so, coming back to these first talks that we have started in this uh, small group, as the title of my speech, uh, we have first talked about the urgency. We thought, what is the most urgent thing about archives at the moment in our country? It was newspaper archives, because Erdogan's government closes newspapers overnight. So uh, the archives of these newspapers disappear with the newspaper. Even before that, there was a very important newspaper called Radical, and their archives, online archives, the newspaper was already closed by their own means. They decided to close it down, but the archives disappeared. It was later found out there was a user's, uh, user uh, mistake. And then it was revealed uh, maybe a week afterwards. So we asked ourselves the question, what would happen if another newspaper is in the same danger? And there was a, a newspaper, and there is still the, the newspaper, which is the most famous newspaper in Turkey. It's called Cumhuriyet. It's uh, established in 1924. And it holds an amazing archive. Maybe not in a very good condition, but it holds an more important uh, part of public memory in Turkey. Since 1924, the Republic was founded in 1923. So what we did, uh, we gathered our audience and we took them uh, to 
I can have sound actually if you have. Yes, be great. We, we, we went to the archive and we asked them, are you prepared for a crackdown on your newspaper? And the answer was, no, we're not prepared. So we were, that's why I'm coming to the subject of being curious. We were curious artists, not aiming to produce knowledge ourselves, but to distribute knowledge of other people. So we just wanted to go to people and ask them questions about how do you archive, when do you archive, and why do you archive? Uh, uh, or can you archive? So this newspaper, uh, you see a little bit uh, the inside of the newspaper as well. This was a very intimate discussion. She's an important journalist who is also cracked down by the, um, like other journalists in Turkey. So this was a very, very intimate conversation. And uh, later we focused on minority groups, the historical minority groups of Turkey and they are public memory. The, I'm talking about the Armenian and the Greek uh, uh, minorities. So we went to their uh, organization. There is an organization called Hranting Foundation, the late Hranting. And they hold the cultural memory of uh, Anatolian and uh, in, in Trakya and Anatolia, present Turkey, the cultural heritage buildings, synagogues, churches. So they are mapping them. And so we went to their organization and we learned about how they archive them. And then we talked about the the present minority, which is uh, 15 million strong Kurdish minority in Turkey. And we invited, this time to our space, to the space that we are borrowing, uh, we invited the Memory Center. It's a very important NGO in Turkey that is archiving forced disappearances of people. And guess what? They are all Kurdish. So they hold an amazing archive. I'm not going to go into details of this archive. Uh, but they told us about their techniques of archiving, the urgency of the issue, how they keep different services in different countries. This is a very important issue for many archive people who archive. Especially in Turkey, we found out that many people hold another server in a safe European location of their archive, because anything can happen. Um, yeah, they are talking about their uh, data analysis and uh, all these talks are recorded and then put on YouTube afterwards. So this was uh, pretty much our first season with maximum 15 audience. Then I come back to uh, our present uh, situation when the weather is better and Erdogan has lost vote. That's very important which means he lost a lot of confidence himself, his own confidence. For somebody whose ego is so strong, this is a very crucial topic. I'm approaching a bit emotional to the matter. I'm not, I'm not giving statistics or anything, but emotionally, he is down, the dissidents are up at the moment. I'm an optimistic person, but still I can uh, assure you that the situation at the moment is much, much better, uh, 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 good of the bad, let's say. Uh, our first speaker of the second season was actually from Russia. Uh, we decided, maybe not so urgent, but it's still very urgent, we decided to focus on ecology archives, seeds, seed archives. And we invited one of the most important seed archives in the world, which is located in St. Petersburg, the Vavilov Institute for Plant Genetic Resources. And Professor Loskotov told us about their past, their uh, historical missions, and how, uh, because to link the situation uh, to topic to Turkey, how they collected seeds from Anatolia in 1920, 1928, uh, up to 1986. Uh, of course, there was heated discussions between the audience and Professor Loskutov because this is a matter of great controversy. Who is collecting the seeds? Who is holding that archive? Uh, the indigenous uh, species are being taken over by a very strong country, and Turkey doesn't hold their own seed archive very well. And uh, he claimed, for example, that uh, there is an agreement uh, of old seed banks actually exchanging this information, but uh, there were some people in the crowd coming from England saying that, well, I asked you once and you didn't give me the seeds. So there was a lot of interesting discussions about seed control of seeds, which is another public memory, uh, ecological public memory, which is a very important uh, topic then. 
Uh, back to this, uh, Professor Zeynep Sayın, uh, who spoke in Turkish, but we will broadcast it with English subtitles afterwards, has talked about unarchiving or unarchive, coming from the ancient Greek term arche, the beginning, the origin. She uh, argued against archiving, and she said there is also the concept of not collecting, not holding, and uh, she spoke about the possibility, impossibility of making an archive, and giving the example of genocides. Um, and we're very close to, uh, with her, and we talked about uh, the, uh, the nervousness of our world at the moment if it can lead to more genocides. So this was a broad topic, so she talked about how at the at, in urgent matters, uh, archives cannot be made, and also some people are intentionally not holding archives, like the Muslim Gnostics that she's actually writing a book about at the moment called the Kalenderis. They are Muslim, but they're Gnostics, and they uh, refuse to collect anything. They treat uh, money like, excuse my wording, like shit, that's exactly what they say. Uh, this is uh, late, if I'm not mistaken, 17th century, quite early. And uh, they don't hold anything, so they don't archive their past. They don't archive, there's no record of them, except for some uh, images, uh, the other painters, mostly coming from the West. Uh, and then she linked them, this group, centuries old, group of Gnostics to the demonstrators at Gezi movement, who also refused to be archived, who also refused to be made documentary about, who also refused to give testimonies to people, especially coming from countries where there have been no demonstrations until then. I'm speaking mostly about West, White, West uh, Europe. Um, and then uh, our next guest will be the uh, Center of Asia Minor Studies in Athens. They are coming to Istanbul. Uh, by the way, we are, uh, because people liked what we did so much, institutions in Istanbul has uh, give us a generous support, like depot and salt, so they helped us to finance their flights, for example, which is because we don't have any budget ourselves. Uh, so this is what I'm saying, like there's a great solidarity in the city now. People are helping each other and uh, just hosting us, and we're doing what we want uh, in that space. Um, so next guest is from Asia Minor Studies who have built up an archive of oral history of people who have been forcibly exiled from present Turkey to present Greece. In 1923, there was an agreement with the Young Greek Republic and the Young Turkish Republic to exchange populations. So whoever was Christian and Greek on the Anatolian side would be kicked out and removed to new villages in uh, present uh, new Greece, which would be emptied from its Muslim Turkish populations. I am a product of that. My grandparents come from Kavala, uh, and I recently visited there, and uh, all the Muslim neighborhoods are completely uh, taken by uh, the new, uh, but, but funnily enough, they are uh, inhabited by the people who were kicked out from Anatolia. So the, they got the same houses. So the Turks are going there and the Greeks are using the Turks' houses. And uh, they feel more friendly, uh, they feel more comfortable like that way because Greece is actually not their, was not their country. So there is a huge past of this. So uh, this archive holds enormous material and wonderful material. Yeah, I'm on time. Uh, that it has told the people before, unfortunately, they died, uh, because most of them are, are gone now, uh, to record the memories, their memories of these towns. Names of streets, names of landmarks, and even, which is very interesting for me as an artist, they have drawn maps from memory of the places that they lived in. Now they are completed called different names. Uh, it's a different story. So uh, we will be having uh, also, uh, they have recorded songs before these old people died. They have or, uh, arranged orchestras for them and they produced an album, a mini albums actually. This is only one of them. Um, and we're asking the question of forced exile now again in the southeast of Turkey. There is a huge crackdown by Erdogan's government. Uh, not only did it happen at this time, but in the, uh, the history of the Turkish Republic, Kurdish minorities have always been, as I said, a huge minority, 15 million, men, have always been uh, suppressed and forcibly evacuated from their villages, villages burned down, and we are fearing for similar consequences soon. 
it's not an exaggeration. So uh, these are uh, forced exiled people in the population exchange from uh, Cappadocia to Corfu, present Corfu in Greece. So that's why we decided to go ourselves after the archive team to go to Diyarbakir, the capital of Kurdish population, populated areas of Turkey, and to conduct a workshop there with an artist initiative group who was just founded recently. They want to build an archive and we want to ask the question how, when, and what to archive in such conflict zones. Of course, we don't know the results, but the structure will be a two-day workshop, maybe no public talks. It's even difficult to make public talks. More than and three people could be dangerous, potentially dangerous. Like in, I think, Thailand, uh, more than four people meeting in a restaurant is regarded a dangerous meeting, so people meet up in uh, McDonald's to have uh, dissident talks. Thank you very much.